So today we're going to be carrying out the chromatography of this unknown mixture of colorful dyes. Two or more of these known colored dyes are mixed together into the unknown mixture and we're going to separate them. So what you're going to need to set up your chromatogram is some chromatography paper. This is just filter paper. You're going to need a pencil. You're going to need a ruler, a paper clip, wooden splint, a beaker, a solvent. In this case, we're going to be using sodium hydrogen carbonate. Sometimes uh, water is used, so different solvents can be used. We're also going to be needing some capillary tubes. These are just very thin tubes of glass that are used to put dots of ink on the chromatography paper. So to set up your chromatography paper, take a ruler and a pencil and you want to draw a straight line about two centimeters above the bottom of the chromatography paper like that you do not want to use ink for this line because if you use ink it can uh, run up the paper with the solvent okay so the pencil is insoluble and will not run up the paper with the solvent. The solvent cannot carry the pencil, but pen can dissolve into the solvent and may be carried up. So we have to use pencil for this. So step two is to put dots of known colors and a dot of the ink you want to separate on the pencil line. We're gonna be using capillary tubes for this. So I'm gonna start with yellow. This is A. Take the capillary tube and then put a dot on your pencil line like that. Then you want to take the next one. This is black, letter B. Take another capillary tube and put the dot next to the yellow, not too close together. The last known color is red, letter C. Take another capillary tube and put a dot on the pencil line. Lastly, we're going to put a dot of our unknown mixture that we're trying to separate. Onto the pencil line. And now this is ready to be put into the solvent. So step three is to place the bottom of the paper in the solvent, making sure the pencil line is above the solvent level. So we're going to take our solvent, which is sodium hydrogen carbonate solution. We're going to pour it into a beaker. We don't need too much. We're then going to take our chromatogra chromatogram, chromatography paper, with the dots on it. And we're going to just bend the top of it around the wooden splint. And we can hold it there using a paper clip. Okay. 
Now we can put the chromatography paper into the beaker with the solvent. Now it's very important that the level of the solvent does not touch or go above the pencil line. So the level of the solvent must be below the pencil line. So we're going to test it first. Ah, so it, it would, if we had put it in, it would have gone below the solvent line. So we need to twist the paper around a few times more. We're going to try that again. I think one more time. There we go. All right, and now it's ready to be placed in. If the solvent level goes above the pencil line, so if the solvent touches the pencil line, then you have to start again. And as you can see, the solvent level is below the pencil line. So now the solvent is going to start traveling up the paper. The paper is not moving, so we call the paper the stationary phase. Stationary means not moving. But the solvent, the sodium hydrogen carbonate, is moving up the paper. So we call that the mobile phase. And as you'll start to see, the colored dyes are soluble, which means they can dissolve into the uh, solvent. So they're attracted to the solvent and they're going to start traveling up the paper with the solvent. So as you can see, the solvent is moving up the paper and the colored dyes are being carried up the paper with the solvent. And you can start to see that some of the dots are separating. For example, if you look at this second one, okay, the dot of the black ink, which is B, you can start to see that it's separating into these two colored dyes. So we'll leave that to uh, separate for a bit longer and then we'll come back to it. All right, when the solvent reaches close to the top of the chromatography paper, you remove it from the solvent and let it dry. Okay, so we're going to fill out this table together. Here you can see I have the chromatogram, which um, I separated the four inks. Okay, we have ink A here, the yellow ink, ink B, the black ink, ink C, the red ink, and ink U, which was the unknown mixture of some of these known inks. So in the table, that's what A, B, C, and U stand for. A is yellow, B is black, C is red, and U stands for the unknown mixture. So the next column is the distance traveled in millimeters. So when you're using your ruler to measure the distance traveled, we're not using centimeters, which are the big segments. We're using millimeters, which are the small segments on the ruler. You need to measure the distance traveled by the solvent, which in this case was sodium hydrogen carbonate. You can use other solvents like water or propanone. You also need to measure the distance traveled by each spot. Now some of the inks are made of more than one spot, that's why some of these squares in the column are divided into two and three boxes. So for A, the yellow, we can see it only contains one spot, it only separated into one spot, so this is pure. For B, it's separated into two spots, this yellow spot at the top and this orange spot underneath. For C, we can see it's separated into one red spot, which means it's pure, and for you, it's separated into three spots. So we're going to measure the distance traveled 
for each spot and fill them in there. And then we're going to work out the RF values uh, for each spot and put them here in the next column. So using my ruler, all right, the first thing we need to do is measure the distance traveled by the solvent. Now you might not be able to see it on the video, but there is a line here that the solvent, which was the sodium hydrogen carbonate reached. So I'm just gonna make that a bit more clear using my pencil. So that was the line reached by the solvent. And I'm going to use my ruler to measure exactly exactly the distance from the solvent front, which is this. I can label it next to it, solvent front, which is the place reached by the solvent as it was traveling up the paper, and the pencil line here at the bottom. This is the pencil line. So the distance between the pencil line and the solvent front using the ruler, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven point five centimeters, which we know seven point five centimeters is how many millimeters? It is seventy five millimeters. And I've used a straight line, so the distance traveled by the solvent for each one is going to be exactly the same, seventy five. And you don't need to write millimeters each time because it's up here in the top column millimeters so we can just write 75 each that's fine all right the next thing we're going to do is measure the distance traveled by each spot so for a there's only one spot here and i'm going to draw a very faint pencil line around it to make it a bit more clear All right, now you don't want to measure from the top of the spot or the bottom of the spot, you want to measure from the middle of the spot. Now the spot is about 2.5 centimeters long, so we're gonna measure it from 1.25 centimeters in the middle. So I'm gonna draw a line through the middle of this spot, and then we're gonna measure the distance from the middle of the spot down to the pencil line. So from the middle of the yellow spot down to the pencil line is 54 millimeters. So I can put that into my table, 54. Now as you can see, uh, the black ink is made up of two spots, this orange one and this yellow one. We can draw lines going through the middle of each one. And we're gonna measure the distance from each of these down to the pencil line. So we'll do the yellow one first from the top and the distance from the middle of the yellow spot down to the pencil line is 335 millimeters. So we'll put 35 here. And the distance from the orange spot down to the pencil line is 21 millimeters. I'm gonna do the same thing for the red spot now, draw a faint line around it, comes to about there. Okay, draw a line through the middle and measure from the middle of this spot down to the pencil line, which is exactly 50 millimeters. I know it looks like it says five on the ruler, but that's five centimeters. Remember, we're using millimeters, which are these small lines, and there's 50 of them between here and here. And now the last one, U, is made up of three smudges or spots. I'm going to draw a circle around this top one, around this one, and around this orange one. And we're gonna go from the middle of the orange, the middle of this yellow spot, and the middle of this spot here at the top. And we're gonna to measure the distance between each spot and the pencil line. 
So once again, I'm going to start from the top, from the middle of the yellow spot, down to the pencil line is 55 millimeters. The next one is 26 millimeters. And the next one is 16 millimeters. And now we can use the equation RF equals distance traveled by the solute divided by distance traveled by the solvent. Now remember, each one of these um, spots represents a colorful dye or a colorful compound that's dissolved in the solvent as it's traveled up the paper. So these are solutes, because the solutes dissolve in the solvent. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven solutes on this chromatogram. So the distance traveled by the solute divided by the distance traveled by the solvent. Here you have the distance traveled by the solute. Here you have the distance traveled by the solvent. So we're gonna do the first one together. 54 is the distance traveled by the solute divided by 75, the distance traveled by the solvent. Work out what 54 divided by 75 is. Okay, so I've written the calculation for you here, 54 divided by 75 equals 0 0.72. And there's no units for RF value, so you can leave that as it is. You don't have to write the calculation for each one in the boxes. However, I did it for the first one as an example to show you what you need to do. So can you now work out the remaining RF values for these two spots in ink B? the black ink, for this spot in ink C, the red ink, and for these three spots in ink uh, U, the unknown mixture of some of these, A, B, and or C.